you have uh, purchased a portable generator for the purpose of powering up your house in the event of a power outage, you've probably thought about how can I connect this generator to my house in such a way that I can uh, run all of my lights, my appliances, without having to run electric cords, extension cords all over the house. There's a lot of misinformation out there. So this video is going to show you a very good way to connect a portable generator to your home in a way that is at once safe, legal, and uh, affordable. There's, uh, there's nothing outrageous in this video, so follow along and I'll show you what we're going to do. This is my dryer outlet. 30 amps, 240 volts. And it exists for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to plug in this dryer. Now if you've done any research at all about connecting a portable generator to your home, you've probably seen a lot of people that are suggesting that you do something like take your generator hookup cord, lop off one end, and replace it with one of these, the male dryer cord for your 240 volt hookup. This is what's known as a suicide cord. And it's called a suicide cord because once you plug it in, there's live voltage on these on these prongs and you back feed in through here and you turn your main breaker off and uh, suddenly you're powering up your whole house. This is dangerous. It's also illegal. If uh, this plug falls out, somebody trips over it, bang! You've got live voltage on these ready to reach out and touch someone. Um, and the other danger is if you talk to fire marshals for various towns they will tell you that there are documented cases of people burning down their homes, homes home fires that start because these cables were not designed for back feed um, because you're feeding here and the circuit protection is all the way back at the panel okay so back feed don't do it the rest of this video is dedicated to showing you how you can do this the right way now if you've purchased a large generator, say 10,000 watts or more, capable of powering your entire home, chances are you've also spent the money on an automatic transfer switch professionally installed, and in that case this video is probably not for you. This is geared more towards the portable generators, the ones in the 3,000 to 8,000 watt uh, range that typically come on wheels, they typically have a little cart that lets you move them around, and uh, more often than not, they'll have both 120 and 240 volt outputs. This is my generator. It's a 6500 watt diesel model from Aurora Generators. They're a Canadian company, um, and they stand behind their product. So far, I've been very happy with these guys. You can call them up on the phone. They'll chat with you about generators in general. Uh, they're a couple of notches more uh, high quality than your cheap Chinese knockoffs. They keep the parts in stock. The diesel engine is very well built. Uh, I de definitely recommend them if you're looking for one. This model is diesel, as I said. It's uh, 6,500 watts, and the output here is uh, 240 volts, 120 slash 240, at 30 amps. That means a 30 amp twist lock receptacle. So if you're going to do a manual transfer switch, there are several different methods of hooking it up, but they all involve putting an inlet receptacle on the side of your house. Now an inlet is different from an outlet because you'll see that the prongs here are male. You always use male prongs for inlets, female for outputs. Now, they're all twist lock. This is called an L1430, and it's a standard twist lock receptacle. Now, my assistant here is going to show how you hook it up to your house. Now, you see one prong here is bent, right? It's a 90-degree yep. angle. Now, you look for the prong that has that. You match it up, push it all the way in, then turn it to the right about 15 degrees. And that's how you'll hook it up. You let that go. This inlet receptacle is the same one that you'll use for several different kinds of hookups. Now, there's three major ways of hooking up an inlet receptacle to a manual transfer. One way is with a fully manual transfer switch. You've seen them, the ones with the big red handles, and you move it up one way to go with utility power, all the way down to go with generator power, and maybe there's a spot in the middle where you um, has no power at all, an off position. These are quite expensive. 
they do get the job done quite well, but they're very expensive. You might pay seven or eight hundred dollars for one that's big enough for your whole home. Another option is to buy what's called a interlock kit, a piece of metal that sits between your main breaker and a double pole breaker that goes in the upper right position of your panel. And that, up, that double pole breaker will go to your inlet receptacle and it feeds the generator and that panel keeps the breakers interlocked so that they can't both be closed at the same time. That makes it legal. They do work, but you do have to have the space in your panel. Uh, I didn't. And I also think they're a little clumsy. But they do work and they are legal. The other way you can go, and the way that we went, is to install a sub-panel that can be transferred between utility power and generator power. So let me show you how we did it. This was the panel that came with the house. 16 positions. It was a little small for this house, and I wanted to add some more circuits to begin with. So what we did was, we mounted up a second panel. And on this panel, we put all of the circuits that we want to be able to run on generator power. Things like uh, lights, the refrigerator, um, the furnace pump. We have a oil-based furnace, so all we need to run is the circulator. Some of the computers and things we have here, lights and outlets in the bedroom, the uh, TVs and computers. And we left things like the dishwasher, the air conditioner, the stove, which can be lit with a match, things like that we left on the main panel. Now the main panel feeds the sub-panel using this 60 amp double pole breaker. And you can see this piece of greenfield conduit up here that feeds the sub-panel. Now here's the piece that makes everything work. This little interlock here. This is a model QO2DTI interlock from Square D, who made the panel. And this little interlock prevents your utility main and your generator main from both being closed at the same time. You see this little hi-hat here rocks back and forth. So, this is a 60 amp double pole breaker coming from the main panel. This is a 30 amp double pole breaker, which via this piece of orange cable here goes to that receptacle that I showed you on the outside. Now, whenever we want to run our home on generator power, all we have to do is flip these breakers and start our generator. Let's show you how it works. So, you're at home minding your own business when suddenly the lights go out all over the neighborhood. But you're prepared because you've got your generator. So let's show you how we do this. This is a diesel generator. I'm going to plug in that receptacle. It twists in place just like just like the other end does. Circuit breaker. Always check your oil, no matter what kind of generator you have. Move the throttle to the run position. Going to heat it up with the glow plug, and I start the engine. So while it comes up to temperature, let's go inside and throw the switch. Now again, our utility power is on right now, so if we were in the middle of an outage, there would be no lights. So, I'm going to turn off all of my loads, and then I'm going to turn on this flashlight so you can see the panel. We turn off the utility main, we turn on our generator main, and then we start to turn all of our loads back on one at a time. And you want to do these gradually so that you're not loading down your generator with a sudden turn on of all the loads in your house. And that's it, we're running on generator power now. To reverse back to utility power, you just do the same thing in the other direction. So that's it, everything you need to know to be able to run your house safely, legally, and inexpensively on the portable generator of your choice. For more information or for more details, go to the web address on your screen. We have plenty of information and plenty of discussion on different ways you can do this. Thanks for watching.